Hello, this is Dr. Peter Swans with Vital Force Naturopathy and DrSwans.com. It's good to be back. I, uh, I've wanted to share a video with some thoughts about the uh, COVID infection. Um, I, had a, I have a good buddy of mine, and you know, early on, he was really anxious about the entire situation. He was wearing masks all the time. Uh, when we'd get together, we were, you know, maintaining physical distance. We were, were following all the guidelines and he was following them to a T. And I noticed a few weeks back that he really loosened up a little bit and he started to change. And I'd, I'd catch him and we'd be talking without the masks on and we'd shake hands or give a high five. And so I finally got the nerve to ask him a couple of weeks ago, like, what changed? And I, you know, I said, it seemed like you were really anxious in the beginning and then suddenly you things change. And he was like, oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, my aunt got really sick. She had COVID. And uh, she's almost died, like from 10 other things in the past. And she survived this too. And she has every possible precondition. She has emphysema and CP COPD and heart disease and cholesterol and diabetes. And I just figured if she could get past this, that I could get past this. And so I thought that was interesting um, and a kind of a funny story and something that we need to share because the death rates from this infection are plummeting, yet we're continuing to do lots and lots of testing. And we are seeing some, you know, increases in positive tests, but decrease in hospitalizations and decrease in deaths. And so I think the question kind of becomes like, you know, on the scale of pandemics, what are we really dealing with. So I wanted to do um, just a little bit of research and I looked up uh, some of the biggest pandemics that the world has, has dealt with. And I want to share some of the numbers and then we can compare it to the COVID numbers. The Hong Kong flu of 1968 killed 1 million people and it killed 15% of the population of Hong Kong. 15%. That is a substantial number of people in a small area, right? The big, big flu pandemic of 1918 was a legit pandemic. Why? Because it would impact anybody, regardless of age or health status, right? Children, elderly, healthy adults, everybody was vulnerable to this. Um, it killed somewhere between 20 and 50 million people with a mortality rate in the range of 10 to 20%. And there were a million deaths a week for the first 25 weeks. Literally nearly a million people worldwide were dying every week for the first 25 weeks. The bubonic plague over a seven year period killed between 75 and 200 million people. That's averaging 10 to 28 million deaths per year. 10 to 28 million deaths per year. Now, let's talk about the COVID numbers up to date. So far, um, the CDC is reporting that there's been over 23.4 million total cases, and the death is around 809,000. Over 15 million people have recovered. So we may hit a million deaths from COVID for 2020. It's possible. I don't think it's likely because the number of deaths, the, the rate of, of people dying from this infection is dropping precipitously. And unless there's a legitimate spike here in the fall when the weather starts to get cold, um, you know, I, I think we'll be somewhere under a million deaths for the year. 15 million people have recovered. 5 million people have recovered in the U.S., in the U.S., we have about 156,000 fatalities. 156,000 people in the U.S. have died. 73% of those fatalities are people that are 70 or older. 73% over 70 years of age. 88.9% of the fatalities are in people with at least one comorbidity. Almost 90% of the people who have died have at least one comorbidity. Right now, these are significant numbers. These are actual deaths. These are real deaths, people dying from this coronavirus, this SARS CoV 2. That is happening, right? We need to keep it in perspective with some other numbers rate, um, related to fatalities in the US. Heart disease kills 
around 647,000 people a year. We will kill three times as many people this year from heart disease. Cancer kills 606,000 people a year. Diabetes kills 80,000 people a year. People taking prescription medications as directed, we kill 128,000 people a year in the US. Medical mistakes, accidental deaths related to medical mistakes in the US kills around 250,000 people a year. Word about 156,000 fatalities, I think it's very likely that medical mistakes will kill more people than the COVID infection in the US this year. And we have to include all of the COVID patients that were intubated, right? That were put on ventilators because that was a horrible mistake and 70 to 80% of the patients that were intubated died. So that has to be counted in the medical mistakes. This doesn't seem like a pandemic to me and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Worldwide, we still have a million people a year dying from HIV and AIDS. One million people a year. We may hit a million people this year from COVID. What's the difference? The main difference, I think, is that HIV is a more chronic infection, which people are living with and often living with for multiple years, and then it may become fatal, where the COVID infection is more of an acute infection, somebody that's susceptible develops it, and if it's gonna be problematic, it's gonna be problematic pretty, pretty quickly. What both of those situations have in common is a very small group of um, potential victims, a very small group of susceptible people who need to be concerned about both of these. And the reason we don't treat HIV as a pandemic anymore, as an epidemic, is because it's very clear who that population is that's most at risk. It should be, and it has, it has become very clear who the population that's most at risk for actual complications and potential fatalities with the COVID infection. That's very clear to us, and it is not the whole population. It's that 70 and older, and those people with at least one comorbidity. So I don't know that we should consider this a pandemic anymore, an epidemic. It was an epidemic in New York City, right? We had a lot of people coming down with the infection in a small area. That's an epidemic. It's a pandemic because it has impacted everybody across the world, but it's not coming anywhere close to the numbers of, of what we've considered to be pandemics in the U.S. And I just think that's important. Um, I think we need to get the word out there. And really what, what this now looks like to me is that the COVID infection, the SARS-2 coronavirus, is really an acute wake-up call for all of the chronic stuff that is killing people every year in the U.S. The heart disease, the cancer, the diabetes, the poor medical practice, the poor lifestyle choices. Those are the people that are at risk from COVID infections. Those are the people that are still dying at greater rates than those dying from COVID infections. And those are the people, they're the susceptible people. So this COVID is just this acute reminder that's saying, hey, your health is your greatest asset. There's things you can do to transform your health. Now is the time to do it. You don't want to be a cancer statistic in the next year or the next year or the next year. You don't want to be a heart disease statistic in the next year or the next year or the next year. And you don't want to be a COVID statistic now or in the next month or the next month or the next month. So you can start doing things to transform your health, to address all of these chronic inflammatory things. And it will make a difference, um, you know, for your susceptibility with the COVID infection. We know that based on the numbers. So that's the information I wanted to share. I uh, appreciate you watching the videos and taking time. Please send questions anytime. Love to engage. And you can follow me online. Check out my website, drswans.com slash connect. And that's how you can find all my uh, other social media places. So I uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.